So today I have a special guest with me, Jessica Craycraft, and she recently went through the Rise Up Queens event. And before you go through the event, if you've watched the videos, you may have some preconceived notions about what you're gonna experience there, what's gonna happen there. And even, we, we started to talk about it, even around the word feminine. Some women see the first video and it talks about being the feminine woman that God's called you to be. I'm gonna let her get into it. But I asked her to come back with me. She did the first Rise Up Queens video, video with me before she had gone through the event. And now she's been through the event. Jessica's a strong leader. She's a driver, she's a doer, she's an amazing mommy. She's a, a strong woman. And so from her perspective, I want her to share today three preconceived notions that she had about the Rise Up Queens event and what she experienced when she actually went through it. So do you wanna start with the first point that you thought? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the first one that I had was, or the first misconception would be that you have to be a girly girl to attend. And I think when you're signed up for a women's event and especially with the word feminine is probably the, was the kicker word for me that I don't use that in everyday language. Mm -hmm. And when I think of the word feminine, I think I automatically think <laughs> like flowers and tea parties and those just aren't really my jam. Yeah. And so I was hesitant thinking, will I be able to relate to the event, but also relate to the women that are there? Mm -hmm. um, but what was really beautiful, I think, for me was to see the diverse group of women that are there. You have, um, you do have women who are girly girls, and you have women who aren't girly girls, and you have women who are in the workforce and boss babes, but also women who are at home raising their kids and are boss babes. And it was just really incredible to walk into that event and have that really that misconception probably changed pretty quickly for me mm. when I was around all of the different women and just getting to start to talk to them and realize, gosh, I'm, I'm not like this woman, but I'm enjoying this conversation. Mm. Um, so that was definitely the first was that I had to be a girly girl to attend this women's event. Mm. I feel like girly girl has grown on me. That is not my natural, right? If you know me, that's not my natural go-to. I mean, I think yeah. I have a pink sweater, a Rise Up Queen's pink sweater, and it's the first pink that even <laughs> appeared in my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. So it is definitely a stretch. And to your point, I think the part of me wanting to create Rise Up Queen's was because I lived in the opposite of girly girl, right? And feminine, like I lived in my masculine for so long, but that worked really well in business like we've talked about, but it didn't work at home sometimes. So when I came home, it was like da da da. So I wanted the word feminine meant a lot for the event because do you know how to transition out of your masculine mode, out of your doer mode, out of your achiever mode, and come to your husband and allow him to be the hero and soften and let your wall down and just be you without having to protect yourself. Because for me, masculine is protecting myself. Like I can keep you at a distance. So the heart of feminine is kind of what you described. It's, it's a little different. And I definitely am not training everybody to be that 100% of the time because I am not that, but I know how to access it yep. and get into it. What else? Uh, misconception number two was that we were going to just sit around and cry <laughs> and talk about our feelings the whole time. <laughs> I laugh because I knew you were <laughs> Yeah, and it, I think uh, for, for me, that thought, while it's so great to feel, it <laughs> sounded exhausting to me. Uh, and I was a little nervous because I thought, I am not prepared to sit with a bunch of women that I just met and just talk about my feelings. And... Um, you do have different times to express your feelings and you have different times that you are sitting in your feelings, which um, at the end I even had shared that it was really just healthy for me to be still a lot of the time and to reflect, but it wasn't like we just sat around all day mm -hmm. just listening to each other talk and just wallow in the, mm -hmm. the hardships. It was um, filled with different exercises that allowed us to reflect and think on and um, and really put ourselves in other people's shoes throughout mm. the way as well. Mm. Yeah, so if you're concerned about having to cry the whole time, if any of the videos made you think that, there's moments of that, moments yeah. of possibility of that. Mm -hmm. And what I know for myself to be true is that I'm really good at not staying in my feelings. Like I can push down whatever's going on and just get done with my to-do list and move past it and not sit in that. And so I need times of reflection to like, oh my gosh, that 
that kind of hurt my feelings. Whoa, I didn't even know I was upset about that. I didn't even give myself the opportunity to have a feeling about that. But when I don't give myself an opportunity to have a feeling about that, what I found is that I often didn't ever give myself an opportunity to have desires mm -hmm. or to have wants. It's like I shut down that whole feeling factory. So not only if you shut down the feeling factory, you shut down the bad ones, but then or the ones that are don't feel so good. But then you also sometimes what I found is we shut down the good ones. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's opportunities in the event where you get to figure out what makes you happy. What do you desire? What do you want? What are the things like? What, what intimately? What do you want with your husband every day? What do you want with him? And what draws you to him? And then hey, is there anything I'm carrying with me that kind of leads you into your third point? Yeah, my third misconception was that um, you I, that you have to have a lot of deep trauma to get something out of this event. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this before, but I feel that I've had a really easy life in many ways. I have been supported and loved since a, I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And so I think going into this, I thought, or will we be in groups are talking about things that maybe I don't relate to as much, or maybe I'm not struggling with. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm grateful for the support and love that I have, but I just thought, wow, will I, will I connect in some of these areas? And there, don't get me wrong, there were some times every now and then that maybe I wasn't relating to that particular exercise or the portion that was, was being taught. But what I would find is that I would, be so humbled in that moment instead because I was able to hear from another woman and just see the world through her lens mm -hmm. and that was really important for me to look at something differently and to ache with them or to um, sit in that hurt that they may have and just think about that and I think that was a really beautiful part for me to see all the different unique individuals in that room, mm -hmm. um, but you don't have to have deep trauma to get something out of it. For me, this event was, it, it's so much of awareness. It's, uh, it's taking maybe what I've thought about once or twice, but then putting it into practice and really thinking, how am I showing up in my marriage? And how am I showing up as a mom, as a friend? Um, how am I showing up and Am I even aware of the way that I'm responding? Um, and I don't, I, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, for me, one of the biggest pieces was taking how to be fluid. And while I think I'm fluid in some areas of my life, I know that I'm, I have held on to being fluid with my husband. Um, and I, I, for some reason, just lack extending grace in that. And so that was such a big piece for me and has been a huge piece for me the last few weeks because I've been able to literally have a mind check and say, hold on, like, am I being fluid about this? Like, mm -hmm. let's, let's let this one go. Like, why am I going to be hard about this? So for me, it was a lot of awareness, no matter what my background was in life. Mm, can I share about the Kate in the picture? Yeah. So oh, I yeah, get, this, I get yeah. this text from Jessica um, after the event and it was her little guy taking a shower outside because he wanted to take a shower outside and she's like, my the water hose. Yes. The water hose. <laughs> and her first instinct was like, we don't do that, right? That's not yeah. what's supposed to happen. And I love how you say it brings awareness to things, right? Because we create rules in life, like rules that, okay, as a, my husband's supposed to do this, as a wife, I'm supposed to do this. And sometimes a lot of us have really rigid rules mm -hmm. of what it's supposed to look like. It reminds me, my mom at one point was telling Brendan not to throw rocks into this like creek area or into this like water area while we were waiting outside a restaurant. And I'm like, why not? He's a boy who makes these rules, <laughs> right? Yeah. But we just have these unconscious rules that we've been following and we live and die by these rules. And these rules sometimes create depression in some of us because mm -hmm. our expectations just don't get met and it's just not working so yeah. what you said is the exact reason for the first rise up queens event mm -hmm. is awareness right what do what do i not know right what, what are things that ways of being that may not be serving me to the greatest capacity and even if you don't have deep trauma and maybe don't necessarily relate to the word feminine yet, right? Or, um, and don't want to sit in your feelings, are if you're an, operating at an eight, could we get you to a 10? Mm -hmm. Or if, you're, if you think you're killing it, right? Is there another level 10? Or are you just kind of just settling for good because it's comfortable right now? So the heart of the first event is just to build awareness. Are there ways where I could just be 10% more effective? For some people, 50% more effective in their relationships every day with their children, with their husbands, 
And then at the next, we go deeper and get to the next layer. So thank you so much yes. for coming in. And so if there was someone on the edge thinking, oh, okay, well, that sounds good. Like, why do you think they should go? It goes back to the awareness piece. I think for me, I operate and move in a really fast pace. And I think um, probably many women do, right? We, we get to react to state, especially if you've got little kiddos or you're working or, or, you're, or you're staying at home with your kids. It's kind of you're on this constant to-do list, which is great. You're keeping it in line. But I know that I was forgetting to stop and say, where can I improve? What could I do differently? And it took this event for that. And something you even said at the event, you checked in with me at one point um, and, and just checked in to say, how's it going? And I really loved that you said, it's similar to what you said a second ago, you had made the mention and said, Jess, if there's just one tiny thing, if there's one thing that you end up taking with you from this event and you put it into practice every single day, within a year, it will be a bigger change than you realize. Mm -hmm. And it was really encouraging to hear that because I thought, okay, cool. It almost put the pressure off of feeling like, do I need to like leave and have 10 things? But it was, yeah, you're totally right. And it wasn't just one thing. In the end, it started with one thing, which has led into like seven other things I'm working on. And I'm excited to see like a year from now, mm -hmm. like to check in with me <laughs> in October of 2023 and say like, cool, how's it been from that? And I think that it's really important for us to remember and also just how healthy it is that um, checking in with yourself and again, being still is necessary 100%. So I'm, I'm excited to see how I show up in a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, then to be continued. Yeah, um, yeah there absolutely. you go. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>